Indirect Fired Heater. This module provides an introduction to the indirect fired heater and its essential applications in surface well testing. It covers its role in hydrate prevention, viscosity reduction, emulsion breaking, foam reduction, and increasing burner efficiency. The module explains the features of indirect fired heaters, their principle of operation, equipment and selection guidelines, and operation and safety guidelines, highlighting best practices for efficient and safe thermal processing. Indirect fired heaters are used to raise the temperature of well effluent for a number of reasons. 1. Hydrate prevention. 2. Viscosity reduction. 3. Emulsion breaking. 4. Foam reduction. 5. Increase burner efficiency. Hydrate prevention. Water is often produced from a well in varying quantities and is often unavoidable and an inevitable consequence of production. Natural gases also contain a proportion of water vapor. Under certain choked flow conditions, the change of conditions across a choke is sufficient to lower the temperature such that the free water and light hydrocarbons in the natural gas become solid. Natural gas hydrates have the appearance of hard snow and they are formed above the normal freezing point of water. Certain gases, particularly H2S and CO2 promote the problem. Hydrates can become a serious problem by causing valves and flow meters to become inoperative and chokes to plug. An indirect fired heater may alleviate this problem. Viscosity reduction. If an effluent has a high viscosity, the ease with which it will flow through a pipe is impaired. This is not normally a problem in well testing, but occasionally, combined with the effects of changes in composition as the reservoir fluid is brought to surface, the viscosity becomes very high and causes problems. As viscosity is temperature dependent, heating the well stream helps the flow characteristics. Emulsion breaking. With production of water from a reservoir, it is necessary to separate oil from water. Under certain conditions, the oil and water are miscible and will not separate unless the temperature of the effluent is raised. The three things necessary to cause an emulsion, two immiscible phases, agitation and emulsifying agents, are commonly present in oil producing systems. Fine solids, carbonates and sulfate compounds can react with certain crude oils to form surface films around the water droplets, which become very stable and difficult to break. Heat assists in the emulsion breaking process by increasing the temperature of the immiscible fluids, reducing the viscosity, deactivating the emulsifying agents, and allowing the dispersed droplets of water to collide. As the droplets collide, they grow in size and settle to the bottom. Foam reduction. The major cause of foam is impurities in crude oil that would be impractical to remove in a well testing situation. Foaming presents good separation and sometimes gives separator level regulation problems. The amount of foam is dependent on the pressure drop, and in some cases the temperature effect is quite spectacular. For this reason, foam suppression may result if the crude is heated. Increase burner efficiency. Typically, the higher the temperature of a fluid, the more efficiently it will burn. Features. The skid-mounted indirect fired diesel heater is used for raising the temperature of well effluents to prevent hydrate formation, reduce viscosity, and break down emulsions. This unit consists of a vessel for water bath at atmospheric pressure, a 4-inch split coil with intermediate choke, and an adjustable choke with a 1.5-inch seat and solid stem tip. On the indirect fired heater, a manifold is equipped with three 3-inch gate valves, generally rated to 5,000 PSI working pressure. The heater also includes a diesel shutdown valve actuated by a pilot light stoppage and temperature controller, a flame arrestor on the burner air inlet, and a spark arrestor on the chimney exhaust. Principle of Operations The indirect fired heater is skid mounted with a protective flame and consists of a water vessel containing two coils through which the fluid passes. The water is heated by a diesel burner and remains at atmospheric pressure. A choke assembly enables the well to be controlled at the heater rather than the choke manifold after the well fluid has passed through the first coil section.
An inlet manifold of three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a bypass of coils and choke. The diesel flame is regulated by an automatic control valve to maintain a preset water bath temperature. A shutdown valve cuts the diesel supply if the pilot light is extinguished. Indirect fired heaters are designed with outputs of 1 million BTU per hour or 2 million BTU per hour and have a 5,000 PSI working pressure coil design. Diesel pumping unit. An air-driven, hydromica gear pump will pump a maximum of 55 barrels per day in order to fire the heater. There is no integral fuel tank, and typically the pump sits on top of a drum full of diesel. The flow rate of the diesel supplied to the burner is controlled by adjustment of the air regulator on the pump unit. Thermostatic valve. The thermostatic valve is designed to regulate the temperature of the water bath at the desired value. At a standstill, the sensor bulb is cold and the valve is open. When the burners are alight, the water bath temperature heats the bulb and the fluid inside the capillary tubing. The valve control head expands, thus exerting a force on the valve stem proportional to the temperature. When a certain temperature is reached, the force is higher than that of the return spring, and the valve closes, thus cutting off the fuel supply. The burner flame is extinguished. When the burner flame goes out, the water bath and the bulb cool down, the fluid in the expansion chamber contracts, and the valve opens by means of its return spring. The burners are again supplied with fuel, and they will relight. The heating temperature is adjusted by a screw, which regulates the force of the spring. CMA Flameout Shutdown System The CMA Flameout Shutdown System closes a pneumatic safety valve in the fuel line when the propane gas pilot light goes out. By turning the manual reset knob to the right, the gas inlet in the three-way valve opens and gas passes to the safety valve servo motor and the pilot simultaneously. The safety valve opens and the pilot can be lit with the igniter. Once the pilot is alight, the mercury in the sensor and the capillary expands and pushes the stem down on the pivot bushing. This causes the orifice to remain open even when the manual reset knob is released. If for some reason the pilot flame goes out, the mercury in the capillary tubing cools down, the stem retracts and the return spring causes the valve handle to move, thus closing the inlet. As the safety valve servo motor is no longer supplied with gas, the valve closes by means of its return spring. Consequently, there is no danger of fuel being supplied to the main burner when the pilot is not alight. Equipment and Selection Guidelines Equipment The indirect fired heater is available in 3,000 and 5,000 PSI pressure ratings. The 3,000 PSI version is heli-portable. Selection Guidelines The indirect fired heater may be selected depending on pressure rating requirements. Heating capacity measured in BTU per hour, safety regulations, and available rig space. Additional considerations. Air supply is needed for the diesel burner and sweep system of the indirect heater. The indirect heater needs electricity for the ignition of the pilot light. The indirect heater needs diesel supply and a diesel pump for the burner. The indirect heater needs propane to supply the pilot light. Water and corrosion inhibitors are needed to fill up the vessel of the indirect heater. Safety Guidelines A perfect understanding of the diesel, propane, and air circuits is a prerequisite to a successful and safe job. Before starting or restarting the indirect heater, sweep out the fire tube with fresh compressed air. In the event that gas or diesel vapors are present, this practice can avoid an accidental explosion. Do not touch the water vessel with bare hands when the indirect heater is working. Verify that the spark arrestor is installed on the chimney. After the job, flush the coils thoroughly with soft water and fill them with corrosion inhibitor before storage. Never flow the well through the coils if a choke is not installed. Sand particles or corrosive fluids can erode the threads in the choke box. Do not use the adjustable choke to stop the flow. You can break the stem tip. Do not use the gate valves on the indirect heater as chokes. Do not transport the indirect heater when it is full of water. The frame cannot support this extra weight. 
Before starting the indirect heater, verify that the inlet and outlet valves of the coils are open. If the coils are filled with liquid and the valves closed, the thermal expansion that results can generate enough pressure to burst the coils. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.